In this video, we will look at earthworks and the subgrade in a bit more detail. The, the existing material along the line of a road may be an existing road that needs to be repaired or rebuilt. Usually these roads stay at the original levels, so earthworks is not usually required. However, other roads may be through grass or bush areas. These are called greenfield sites, and the road may need to be built above or below the existing ground level using earthworks. Earthworks involve reshaping the land surface by removing soil or rock from one area and relocating it to another area to produce a smooth profile required by a road. For example, there may be gullies and hills along the road route, so we need to cut into the hills and fill in the gullies so the road follows a direct route and the slopes on the road, or the grades, are smooth and as shallow as possible. Usually greenfield sites have topsoil and vegetation on the surface. This material needs to be removed and disposed of as topsoil is not a suitable foundation material as it is too soft. This site clearance operation exposes the underlying soil or rock upon which the road can be built. Road sections may be at or close to the existing ground level, in which case the earthworks just involves removing the topsoil and shaping the road, as shown in the top illustration. This is usually referred to as the road being at grade, which means all you need to do is shape or grade it using the grader. So on these drawings, the ground level is shown as a green line, while the new road is shown as a dashed black line. The road may need to go through a hill or be below the existing ground level, in which case the earthworks need to form a cutting. Alternatively, sections of a road may need to be above the existing ground level, so we need to construct a fill embankment to construct the road on. In other sections, the road may run along the side of a hill, which is called a sidling cut. The hill section may be a balance of cut and fill, as shown here or it may be entirely in cut, or entirely in fill. Roads usually involve a mix of these type of earthworks. In other words, there may be some sections that are at grade, some sections in cut, some sections in fill, and some sections in sidling cut. The surface of the finished earthworks is called the formation. The formation level, or FL for short, is the height of the finished earthworks surface relative to, to a datum, and is usually shown on the drawings. A datum is a standard level that we use to measure heights. The most common datum is mean sea level, so an earthwork surface that is 20 metres above the sea level datum is said to have a formation level of 20. The formation level for each part of the road is determined during the design process and is shown on the construction drawings. Providing the formation level enables the road to be constructed to the correct levels. The soil that supports the pavement is called the subgrade. Definition of how deep the subgrade is varies, but an indicative measure is about a metre deep. But the road loadings are carried by lower parts of the soil as well. The subgrade extends outside of the carriageway as the soil, as this soil provides lateral support to the road, that is horizontal support. In other words, it prevents the soil directly under the carriageway from bulging out during the vehicle loading. Also, the load is distributed out from the carriageway, so the stresses from the road loading are further dissipated as we get deeper into the underlying soil. The subgrade is compacted to make it stronger and better able to support the road. It is also shaped to match the, final sh the shape of the final road. Note that the subgrade surface has the same camber as the road, so subsurface water will flow away from the part of the subgrade supporting the road. Ponded water in the subgrade can result in the subgrade becoming saturated and losing strength. Having the subgrade sloping at the same camber as the road means that the subbase and base course are a constant thickness across the whole width of the road, which makes it easier to lay and compact. Some soils are naturally strong and can support the road. However, other soils may not be very strong and need to be strengthened. 
we will look at subgrade strengthening methods such as geogrids and lime stabilisation in later videos. Sometimes the soils are just too weak or otherwise unsuitable to be a subgrade, so these soils need to be removed and replaced with stronger materials. This is a very costly solution and is usually the last resort. Sometimes filter fabric is installed on the subgrade surface before the sub base is laid. This filter fabric prevents clay or silt soil particles migrating up into the sub base while still allowing water to drain out of the sub base. Rising water tables can carry clay or silt particles up into the sub base and base course layers, which eventually cause them to block up and become impermeable. Water then gets trapped in the sub base and base course layers. This results in a loss of strength of the aggregate layers as the water lessens the contact between the aggregate particles and lubricates the contact areas. However, water from the sub base needs to be able to drain down to the subgrade. So filter fabric is a synthetic material which has very fine holes in it that stop the fine particles migrating upwards but lets the water drain out of the subbase. It is also called geotextile or bitum. This is illustrated in the bottom diagram, which is a highly magnified section of a small section of the filter fabric. The filter fabric is shown in red. Below the filter fabric are soil particles, shown in orange. Above the filter fabric is the lower part of the pavement, which is usually the subbase. Uh, the pavement aggregate is shown in grey. Note it's highly magnified and the aggregate particles shown would be fine sand particles which are about the thickness of a page of paper or about 0.1 millimetres. And in reality the silt or clay particles would be too small for you to see. The coarser silt particles are about a width of a human hair which is 0.6 millimetres wide or 60 micrometres. While the clay particles are 2 micrometres typically and smaller, which makes them at least 30 times thinner than a human hair and invisible to the, to the human eye. However, water particles are significantly smaller, being measured in millionths of a micrometer, and so they can fit through the holes in the filter fabric.